Now that Nvidia's RTX 4070 Super has hit store shelves, the card that I was personally quite bullish on, I wanted to take a look at how things have played out with this GPU. What were reviewers saying? Did it meet performance expectations? Along with that, it seems like AMD is actually starting to make their move and retaliate, but is it enough to steal Nvidia's thunder, or are we going to be looking at complete dominance? All that and more to be discussed in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. I wanted to follow up with all of you guys now that we have the RTX 4070 Super available for the public to buy and reviews are out showcasing its performance. When it comes to performance, there are really no surprises here. The card basically landed where I said it was going to. We're looking at 3090 levels of performance. And I mean, if you've been following the PC hardware industry for a while now, then looking at the specs alone would have told you where it would perform. Now, as always, I definitely urge you all to take a look at as many reviews as possible as results will vary from reviewer to reviewer depending on their methodology, test system, their games, etc. Speaking of which, I saw Gamers Nexus catch quite a bit of heat for their review and understandably so. The main aspect of their review that people took issue with was their selection of games. What I'll say about this is that if the games they're showcasing have good GPU scaling, then they're still valid tests. However, it's 2024, they shouldn't be using games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, a 6 year old title, GTA 5. Instead, they should be using a more modern title like like Alan Wake 2 or the new Avatar. Final Fantasy and Walker is an MMO benchmark. Rainbow Six Siege is a competitive FPS. Like these are titles which I expect to see in a CPU review, not a GPU review. And on top of that, they also used a 12700K, which don't get me wrong, isn't a bad CPU, but you gotta tune it and they did the opposite instead. So really weird review, the choice that they made no sense to me. Instead, maybe a 14900K or 7800X 3D would have been better for them. Hardware unboxed and a review site like Tech Power Up on the other hand, had a more complex in test system setup where the former was using a 7800X 3D and the latter had used a 14900K. They had also used an updated library of games including newly released titles and I think this is what people were looking for, right? You've got new GPUs being released in 2024, you also want to know how they're going to be performing in these new games on newer engines using newer technologies. Sure, you can go back and find old titles that will show GPU scaling but I think that doesn't tell the full story. Anyways, going back to the topic on hand here, you can see how the 4070 Super is basically on the heels of an RTX 4070 Ti non-super and is around 20% faster than the original 4070. So nothing earth shattering but at the same price point for a refresh it's definitely not bad. Also Kit Guru had an overclocking segment in their review and some partner models do have pretty good headroom to the point where you can exceed stock 4070 Ti performance so that's actually pretty decent. When it came to the general consensus of most of these reviews, while many didn't say anything particularly negative about the performance, they did feel like this should have been the original 4070 from the start and should have been around $500 to $550, and that is exactly what I had been saying all along this past year since we got the 4070 series. It was pretty obvious given the specs and performance hierarchy that all of the SKUs had been shifted upwards and Nvidia was misleading people with naming, but nonetheless, this is about as good as things are going to get for a while now, so I'll definitely take it. A lot of people forget this, and Chris brought this up on his Techonomics podcast, which by the way, you guys should definitely check out, but Nvidia didn't have to do this. They literally had no reason to. They could have easily wrote out the existing lineup they already had until the 50 series, whether that's going to be coming later this year or Q1 2025. So as much as people love to run around the space and call Nvidia evil, they actually threw a bone to PC gamers. Of course, that is also oversimplifying things here. There are other reasons from a business standpoint as well, I'm sure, and one of those being a ramp up in this sector of the industry. I mean, just think about it. Had Nvidia not launched these cards, there wouldn't be much to talk about in the hardware space. It was basically dead. This way, we can get some hype going, drive sales numbers, maybe to appease investors. I'm not sure exactly. Circling back to the 4070 Super, what many reviewers also said that if you're in this mid range market, that $600 segment, then the 4070 Super becomes the go to option. I was looking at prices for AMD's RX 7800 XT, which was compared a lot to this GPU because it's priced relatively close, and I did notice it has come down in price. For some reason, 7800 XTs had trended upwards when we had looked at the pricing previously, above MSRP to around $530 to $580 in some cases, but I noticed they are back down if you go for the lower tier models. But I don't think that is enough, and I think most people will gladly pay the extra $100 or so and grab the RTX 4070 Super. The 7800 XT does have the advantage of giving you 16 gigabytes of VRAM as opposed to 12 and a wider memory bus, so it could age better in the future, 
but as of now, you get better software with NVIDIA, and that will be enough to justify it for most folks. And again, people are forgetting what NVIDIA has here is a monopoly. AMD will have to drop down the 7800 XT to $450 for it to start looking more justifiable to the average consumer, and for them to compensate in their deficiencies when compared to NVIDIA in those areas we talked about in my previous video. But I don't think AMD is going to be willing to do that just yet, probably due to them making no margins on this card. But they have made a move elsewhere, which we'll come back to in just a moment. As for how the 4070 Super did initially upon launch, I heard it's a mixed bag, and it can vary depending on which part of the world you reside in. I don't think anyone was really expecting this card to fly off the shelf or really be hard to find. Remember, this is a refresh after all. At this point in the generation's life cycle, you're going to get a lot of people who have already upgraded to something new or modern, so it doesn't make much sense for them to hop on this. Or there will be people who will have waited this long and still be thinking that, you know what, I've already waited like 12 months or so, I'll just wait for the 50 series at this point. If you look on Newegg, you'll find that there are numerous models still in stock and quite a few which are selling around MSRP, which is good. When we started to hear about rumors and pricing and all of that, I think there were a number of people concerned that these cards wouldn't be selling at MSRP, that it was going to be a fake MSRP, and they would be marked up much higher, but that doesn't look to be the case. Sure, there are premium models that are above $600, but you don't have to go for them. The cheaper ones will do the job just fine, especially because the 4070 Super is a pretty efficient card. I was looking at Canada Computer's inventory, who are one of our largest retailers up north here in Canada, and there were plenty of cards still in stock. Only the Founders Edition I heard was pretty hard to get, but that one is always going out of stock pretty quickly because there's quite a bit of demand for it, you know, being a first party and video card, it looks nice. But you also have to remember the Founders Edition is quite limited in supply out of the gate. What I think is going to happen is that initial sales numbers aren't going to look impressive. Heck, as much as we all hated the RTX 4070 Ti when it came out, even that GPU had a better initial launch, but I think after a few months this will end up as one of the more popular 40 series GPUs and will gradually make its way up to the top on the Steam charts. I ran a poll on my community page and, you know, thank you to everyone who took the time to vote in that. I did share it in my last video, but I had just posted it while I was making that video, so there weren't as many results. Overall, the distribution is much closer than I thought it was going to be according to my audience. Again, I'm not expecting the 4070 Ti Super or the 4080 to fly off shelves, but I still think there it will be a decent amount of demand. The former in particular because if you can tune it and overclock it to the point where you are getting stock 4080 performance, then at $800 it will look very appealing to a lot of people. Now when it comes to AMD, it looks like they have started to retaliate, and their first move is to drop down the price of the RX 7900 XT, which wasn't a popular card to begin with. It looks like they all have also dropped the price on the 7900 GRE, but that model is only available in certain parts of Asia, and I think it just started to roll out in Europe, so it's not really relevant to us here in North America. Currently on Newegg, it looks like some models are going for a little over $700, however I don't think this this will be enough to move the needle for them. Being sandwiched between the 4070 Super and 4070 Ti Super isn't going to be good enough. You can take a look at the benchmarks now and see that the 4080 is ahead by a decent amount, and if the 4070 Ti Super will be close to that, then people will happily pay the extra $100 or so and buy that GPU. It faces the same sort of dilemma that the 7800 XT faces. AMD can price their GPUs at whatever prices they want, but if they really want to be moving units, they have to be a whole tier cheaper while performing a whole tier higher. A 7900XTX at $800 would make the GPU market super interesting, just like how the 7800XT at $450 would as well. But they're not willing to do that, at least not yet. And it's not me just saying this, people who have never been to my channel will watch just this one video alone and proceed to write NVIDIA fanboy in the comments. But if we head on over to the AMD subreddit, that seems to be the general consensus. Heck, people are saying that they want them to go even lower than what I was mentioning. When even your own hardcore fan base is telling you that they're not interested in buying your cards anymore, more, then you know you've got a big problem on your hands. So the RTX 4070 Super has certainly made an interesting impact on the GPU market. Sure, it's nothing earth shattering, but for a refresh, it's certainly not bad. And at this point in this inflated market, it's definitely better than what we had before. Along with that, it's readily available, so you don't have to worry about fake MSRPs here. The rest of the 40 Super lineup has yet to hit store shelves, and I've got a feeling we aren't quite done yet in terms of responses from Team Red. Anyways, that will do it for this one. We'll touch base in the next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.